Hey, welcome back to Ian's Financial House of Horrors. Happy Father's Day on Spirit Finger Sunday. Yeah, that's getting kind of old. Either way, we got a bunch of cool... Look at uh, this. Look at this monster. Look at that. Look at that. It is a three-piece. Look at that. Good machinist um, out in uh, California. Uh, one of the tank guys on the forums. Uh, Rich... I uh, got these made uh, for a select small group of us. Um, also, there's a uh, like a model bow de something out in Germany. They just came out with one as well, but the uh, the fume extractor is resin. So uh, you know this is this is slick. It's also it's a lot cheaper than this one. Shipping though, uh, it's not that much cheaper then, and it'll take you uh, six weeks to get it in the states, give or take. Um, we also. We order, this is from DKLMRC. This was shipped out in February. Uh, yeah, we know it's 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 March nineteenth. Uh, finally showed up uh, because uh, Carson had to ship it via surface mail. Um, oh, we got some cool Abrams antennas or something. His new antenna style. Those are cool. And we've got our nineteen nineteen three D resin printed and. Uh, uh, yeah, one of the little elevation arm things. I just order one whenever I order. Throw it in for a couple bucks, so I always have a spare. But this is quite small and intricate, so we'll get this guy painted up. It's got an ammo box, got a little belt of ammo. It's going to look very nice. Like I said, we have the barrel. Uh, we have a dinner napkin from a fancy Italian restaurant uh, that they gave us with some uh, bread that I asked for an extra loaf to go. Uh, so what we're doing with this is we're going... Uh, I don't want to use this ugly, godforsaken piece of rubber um, so that the barrel and the machine, you know, the coax machine gun can move up and down. We're going to use this one, meant for basically a static model, or meant for someone who's never going to raise or lower their turret from dead ahead. And uh, we're going to canvas it up with this white stuff here, with this napkin. It's a nice, heavy weight cloth napkin. Uh, a decent handkerchief, I've been told, will work well. But if you look at the texture on that, it's... It's pretty, just to weave this, this restaurant, so steal a restaurant napkin, you know, you can get one from Outback Steakhouse, maybe, you know, uh, Applebee's, whatever, whatever a crappy place you're going to or fancy place, just grab a napkin. Uh, not, I'm not recommending people are, be thieves, um, but, eh, you know, one goes missing, they don't notice. <laughs> just saying. And I think my plan is going to be to skeletonize this. I'm going to cut around... I'm going to leave just a little thin strip of rubber between these things and then between the edge and here. Um, maybe more, maybe a couple of strips, you know, give it a little more strength um, to just kind of maintain where these holes are and the shape in regards to the outside and then cut away most of the exterior. I'll probably leave these little guys here. I don't know, maybe not. Um, and then gl glue napkin to it. Uh, that's That's how I've been been advised to do it by one of the very skilled modelers on uh, RC Tank Warfare forums who was kind enough to reply to my uh, private message with the material he uses. So, Will, I came up with the skeletonizing this thing myself, but uh, he was very, very helpful with regards to the material to use and how to treat it. Um, so there we go. Uh, I'm going to get to work and try to try to make this thing look finished. And get it finished. And we got we got a lot of stuff, to, little bits and pieces to paint, and side skirts to bolt on, tracks to put on, rubber tires, all that good stuff. Rubber tires, ooh, um, yeah. Finish painting the tracks, rubber tires, tracks on, side skirts on, and uh, build up this 1919 barrel. Replace that. Should be fun. And it's so serviceable. It's so easy to take this thing apart in sections. It'll be a breeze to swap out this barrel. So we'll be right back. Oh, we all have those days when we're optimistic that we're smarter than we really are, but sometimes it turns out it's not the case. Uh, the gentleman on the tank forum that uh, told me what, you know, what he does, uh, he said he uses a handkerchief. Now, I'm assuming, I, I don't, I mean, God, I haven't touched a handkerchief. I mean, my dad had a handkerchief, has a handkerchief. Um, I don't know if he does that anymore, you know, with the, the imported flu. You might want to not, not, not reuse a snot rag over and over and put it back in your pocket. Uh, but that being said, they're much thinner material. They may be a cotton poly blend, a little more f uh, flexible, uh, supple, 
we should say. So I gutted this thing. Makes sense. Like, I think I was on the right track. Um, but, ugh. It's, yeah. Um, not to mention super gluing cloth onto a piece of rubber is not the easiest thing in the world. I possibly could salvage this and make it work. Um, but that being said, before it's, uh oh, oh, yeah, before it's completely too late, let's just, oh god. I spent a decent amount of time on this. By the way, uh, all bathroom breaks on this episode are sponsored by Taco Bell. Um, <laughs> I wanted it so bad, and then you got it, and oh, you got what you deserved. Okay, so here's our little gutted thing. This is still fine. We can still use this. Um, <clears throat> I may, uh, where do you even buy handkerchiefs? Do they have to go to, like, a department, like, a clothing store? Do they have to go to, like, Macy's? Uh, do they have handkerchiefs at Walmart? <laughs> I don't know. The supermarket? Highly doubt it. Um, they probably banned handkerchiefs quietly in the uh, in some legislature for uh, relief funds. To be like, oh, 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 those handkerchiefs, you know, uh, they're not a good idea. So there we go. We screwed up. We're bad. We're not, we're not bad at that's the cloth thing. Goodbye. Um, we will temporarily just use this thing, I guess. Um, I don't know. So either way, I have all my little rubber bits. We did make some... Uh, wasted a lot of time in that. Uh, we did have some other progress, so the little, uh, little pintle mount, okay, for the, uh, M1919, we used some flat styrene stock and some, some L there, angle iron, but, you know, styrene, glued it to the bottom of the little 3D printed pintle, we, we chopped her down pretty low, um, and, uh, we're gonna get that mounted, yeah, Right, right about there, okay, on the cupola, because um, that is kind of the the most common place I see it is to to the uh, left of the binoculars in between two of the periscopes. Best photo I could find. That's kind of where it was. This is not the kind of mount IDF used, but uh, you know, you know, I'm a close enough kind of. It's, it's my my form of scratch building. Uh, I'm sure there's more accurate things I could have potentially made, but the photos are grainy of IDF tanks in situ back then, and uh, most ones in, in, in museums, a lot, you know, they get demilled, uh, so sometimes they'll just remove the, uh, the turret machine guns. That being done now, and we've got our, so we've just got to paint up our little, our little bits. That was some tiny little screws to get that pintle on there. This whole pintle is just kind of wrong. Um, for IDF. This is more of a World War II pintle, um, as far as I can tell. Uh, but you know what? Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, close enough for government work, so they say. Um, we're gonna get this stuff painted black and our little clippy stick. Let's see, will it clip? No. We're just gonna, just gonna stick it in there for painting. We'll clip that to another stick. See? Look at that. Perfect! Here, that's how she'll dry. Um, okay. Be right back with something, I hope. Jeez, it's turning into be a really, you know, garbage episode of the build here. All right, BRB. I love rubber tires. Um, I'm so happy this kit came with rubber tires. Uh, I was very upset um, at the, uh, the Sheridan for not having rubber tires. He had to paint them on. I mean, come on. Oh, either way, so installing the rubber tires. <clears throat> Getting them on the back road wheel, the inner, sorry, the inner road wheel, is a little tricky. Uh, it's, it's not hard hard, it's just a little annoying. What you do is you flip the tire inside out, makes it a hell of a lot easier to slide over the outer road wheel, and then you start folding it back. Oh, come on, now I'm, now I'm fiddling because I'm on camera. Yeah, whatever, here, you just kind of flip it back, right side out, and it's already basically on that road wheel now. It's uh, pretty pretty easy. You can even do it with the outer road wheel. It's sort of not necessary, um, but you just get her on the track and then just flip it around. And there you go. They go much easier that way. Uh, for now, that is all. I got more of these tires to do. We have stuff drying. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Okay, so uh, we have a bunch of these little extra three-link sections of track. Uh, one of them is going to be stowage on the front. Uh, glasses of the hull. 
Um, and what we wanted to do is sand them up. So we did, the tracks are under the table, cooking show style, they're, they're right underneath here. Um, but what we did was you take, oh come on, there we go camera, uh, the Desert Dust Model Wash, okay, thin it down with some white spirits or whatever the hell you call them, and then we have a Desert Dust Pigment Powder, and you slop it on there, slop on the liquid, and then take a big fat brush and slop on that pigment powder. And that's what we end up with. Ah, uh, yeah, way too sandy. Then you take a stiff little cleaning brush. This is actually a car interior detailing brush. And it's stiff enough, but also meant to not harm car interior. So it's a good stiffness. That's what she said. Um, and you just, you just brush her out. There we go. And that perfect amount of caked on sandy dust stuff is what we're left with. And if you want to see it in action, here we go. There we go. This is still drying a little bit, so it's not the best time to do this, but it's okay. We only need one track link set for the front hull, so we can go ahead and... You can also use a toothbrush. Those work well. Uh, but the wife really can't stand when I use her toothbrush for this. Um, she was pretty pissed the last time. Um, I had to get her a new head for a Sonicare, and those are not cheap. So there we go. Okay. And there you go. And they always come out a little unique, which is nice. And when you're doing the main whole tracks, uh, they look really good. Uh, I, I don't... Uh, the tracks are still drying. Uh, they're not quite ready. Not quite ready for prime time yet. See, there's still a wet spot. Again, what she said. Oh dear, I'm on a roll. Okay, enough dad jokes out of this ass. Um, here we go. Uh, I'm working on the barrel. Uh, I've got the barrel painted. I uh, did the highlight, the shadow and highlight coat. Hit it with our, our IDF mix of 50-50. It's in the other part of the video. Uh, so yeah. We're doing that. We'll be right back with the L7-105 main gun on our IDF Centurion. Ooh, exciting. Ooh. Okay, just stay there in suspense. Be right back. Woo, a little bit of a marathon. Getting a little bit late. Nine o'clock at night already. Look at those tracks. We just flat cleared them to lock in our powders, pigments, and other things. There's the... The inside of the tracks came out beautifully. Looks like this thing's been driving around uh, Israel, you know, doing maneuvers, as they say. We're gonna get these tracks on, and uh, I'll show you the tank. Uh, the barrel's in, it looks awesome, it fits perfect. Um, and yeah, we'll be right back. This is, this is gonna be really good. I love this tank. <clears throat> oh my God, oh ho oh, oh. ho. This is one of the most fun builds I've ever done. Um, I, I don't think it will take the spot in my heart that the, the M1 Abrams has. Because um, I just adore that tank. But look at this thing. Oh my god, we got our, our nice little antennas going here. Our tracks are on. They look beautiful. Um, we got our L7-105 on here. Did we already scuff up the barrel a little? Eh, whatever. Eh, you know, it's it's out in the field. It's a tank. It's meant to get a look at that thing. There we go. So, this is it for tonight. Uh, when we come back next time, we'll be, uh, you know, doing some, doing some track, you know, doing the same uh, desert washes and pigments in all the, all the running gear down here. At least what you can see, because I'm putting the side skirts on this, which is going to cover up most of this beautiful uh, road wheeliness. Um, and then, you know, we'll figure out a nice mild chipping and um chipping and 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 desert dust washing and pigmenting and streaking grimes and we'll we'll come up with with a nice little uh we're gonna this thing's gonna be awesome when it's done i mean it's already freaking awesome it is so easy to work on i swapped out this barrel literally pop the top open by just using the spring-loaded boxes three screws one wiring harness pl unplugs the whole the whole turret's off that's it it's off and there's a ton of room underneath it and then you literally undo two tiny screws over here 
and the turret side will just start separating and you pull out the whole trunnion assembly and boom, Bob's your uncle. There you go. Beautiful. I just beautiful. So yeah, I, I highly recommend going with, with a 10, you know, 105 barrel if you want. Otherwise the stock 20 pounder is is just fine. It's it's a very lovely piece of machined aluminum. Um, if you are using this aftermarket barrel, I don't think you will be, but if you're one of the guys who got one of the Rich Johnson barrels, you do have to remove the white JST plug from the wire for the LED and install from the muzzle end and feed the wires back and then reinstall your JST connector. If you're using the model bow one that just came out, no idea. No one has it yet. I haven't seen it. Um, no one's got the grubby hands on it to uh, do an install. But maybe it feeds, since it's a one piece barrel with a, a resin thing, I'm assuming the LED will just feed up from the breech end this way. It's like the uh, proctologist. Actually, this is from Cannonball Run. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> I won't feel a thing. <laughs> yeah. There we go. We're done for tonight. We'll be back next time with uh, painting the stowage. Uh, chores, chores, chores. It's like clean up, clean up after dinner. Pick up after the dogs. Paint your stowage. It's like a nagging wife wants me to do the stowage. But either way, we'll be back. I got a text message. It's either a compliment on a photo I've sent of this tank to Buddy, or it's my wife saying, "Get your ass back up here." It's, uh, it's 9.30 at night, and you got stuff to do and work to go to tomorrow, which we do. Um, so, be back next time, everybody. Happy Spirit Finger Sunday. Happy Father's Day again. Adios.